Good morning. This is Halicrafters Rehabs. I think I've solved the volume problem that I've been that's been plaguing me since I started. Hopefully, this will uh, be a whole lot clearer. You can hear the trains in the background, and occasionally you'll hear the birds from uh, this uh, spring day after the rains. You see, I've been busy. Um, I've put in the tube sockets, all except for the 6A uh, SA7 uh, mixer tube, which is a very special socket that you can't buy new. We had the problem with these things rotting, it appears, from uh, coming apart in my hands when I was trying to remove the wires from the rectifier tube. I also took the opportunity to put in uh, uh, ceramic, these are all loosely in right now, they'll, they'll be tightened down later. Ceramic uh, tube sockets for the hot burning tubes of the output tube and the rectifier. I mean, what the hay, right? They're used in um, tube ampl amplifiers a lot and they do reduce the amount of heat that gets inside the chassis. And the lower uh, the temperature that you can keep things in here, the more you extend the life of everything. I put some things in the front side here just to keep the chassis off the, uh, off the surface here. So uh, this is, put some grommets in. This is just a temporary standoff in these two parts right here. So that keeps it cleaner than it would be if we were just sitting here while I was working on it straight on the surface of the uh, workspace. No matter what you do to keep it clean, it's always got particles and heat and everything coming up. So, a reassembly is going to be very slow, careful, and tested all the way. And the first thing we're going to tackle today is the oscillator circuit. Here's a close-up of the oscillator. Now I'm thinking there must be somebody in every radio shop back in the day in the factory called the switch man <laughs> or lady. I don't know. There were a lot of people still in the workforce after World War II. Uh, switches are a key component of communication receivers and they um, I used to avoid even thinking about them you know maybe I can do all this stuff without ever coming to the switch but doing a thorough job cleaning job and everything else and uh, I've had a lot of uh, issues that even if you keep these uh, uh, mica capacitors in here. There's still a tracking problem and, and so forth and having to switch out and finding the right capacitance for to the receiver today versus back then uh, results in the need for being able to get in and out relatively easy. So I'm reconstructing this as best I can to make it easy to switch these out if necessary, this one over here, uh, capacitors, um, to get a re better tracking of the electronic. This is what the dial is reading and the electronics are, you know, can be anywhere along here or smaller or larger like that. So, uh, at any rate, I want serviceability as a high Call it um, high value that I have in rebuilding these things as well as other uh, aspects of quality. So I have prepped things. The, the switch wires are pretty much ready to go and, uh, and down at the bottom in there I've done all the soldering necessary so that I can get in and out. These can be removed simply 
by heating up the contact at the switch and it will just pull right out. This has a, an extender right here which can easily be removed. Uh, from this point, let's see if I can move my finger around so you can see it. From the point at the exit of the capacitor to the point where it junctions with the coil adds to the inductance of the coil. So this, it's important that this be the same length as it was before or as short as possible. So on this side of the capacitor it's not that important. So if you want to lengthen something to make it easier and more accessible you can do that. In this case the foil side of the capacitor dictated that really the short piece of the lead go right at the at the switch and we'll just keep it as close as we can and as easy to remove as we can. So each of the coils has been serviced. Uh, I put a coat of uh, Super Corona dope on each one. It makes them look real nice um, and cleans them up. They've been prepped uh, to be wired in. And so we'll start with band one. There's actually a little key here that shows you where it goes. And we'll put this in here. And we have one of these the screwdriver I was going to use. There it is. So, I just place this in its position, restoring its place. There we go. It's now seated. I reconditioned these trimmer capacitors. Turns out that they were almost frozen in place and I had to very carefully back them out. I cleaned them in evaporust and then the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and used a little dab of this uh, deoxid grease and put it on the tip and that allowed it to screw back in properly. Obviously this will be all over the place when we start to align it. But I'm not concerned about that at all. So you have A, you have uh, can't see it. I need to get my sharper reading glasses here. Oh, they're all the same. Let's look at this. Yeah, that's B, C, and D. So, one thing we're going to do is we're going to measure the inductances and resistances where it's rel uh, relevant. I mean, it's always relevant from ohming out point of view, but the... I've already put in the wrong one. <laughs> I thought I was looking. You know how you tell? You look at the um, at the number of landings and obviously this is a that was the <laughs> the right uh, band because it doesn't have those windings. This is actually band three. Yeah. Always you know act first and plan and think second. So we're going to take this right back out and we're going to put the right one in here. There's something wrong with that. Anyway, um, so that's band three. This is band one, ready to go. Yeah, that looks more like it. Um, but you can see there are a lot of windings on this. It's uh, just as easy to check it when it's in than out 
maybe even easier because it won't run around for me while I'm plugging meters into it. So let's get this right one in the right place. Oh, uh, yes. Well, I wonder why band three is on band one when they get the radio together. Okay. I assume. Not, you know, torque tight, but tight. All right, so the measurements are from A to D. Actually, D is, in this band, is also C. So I'm going to change that to C. Or D and C. It's, the, the two are, D is actually not connected to anything, so it's really C. The way they, uh, the final manufacturer of this is. So, A to C. There's A. Here's C. We're going to not put it on capacitance, we're going to put it on inductance. And I see 92.5 microhenries. And that's probably typical for a broadcast band medium wave. Uh, so 92.6. And then the next one is A to B. It's 107. If we're looking here, so A to C was from here to here, from A, A, I'm sorry, A to C is from here to there, but D is not really wired in. <laughs> Let me correct the schematic, okay, this is not even here, and C is direct, okay. <laughs> it's confusing when they don't actually do it that way, they didn't need to. Okay, A to C was 92, so it's a shorter piece here. A to B is the longer piece, so it's 107. And then B to C is a short piece, and it's 2.8. Doesn't add up. Well, it still works. All right, so. The next thing we'll do is, now, in the broadcast band, it's not critical. I mean, this little bit of inductance is almost nothing, and so the number of windings that are in this thing, maybe for uh, the, C, the B connection, it might be relevant. So, B is going to go, uh, first of all, we have to put a uh, wire in this. And I have keyed in a wire here. This is the wiring connection for B. All I did was put a piece of wire in there to, as a clue, Q, to put that wire in place. And we're going to probably like this because we're trying to make this is, is not really going to matter that much on broadcast man. It will matter a great, uh, increasingly matter as we get farther and farther out. So, this is where the art of serviceability comes in. That's too much wire. So we'll cut this down a little bit. We need to wrap this around and around and around and around. No, we don't. 
you have so many units. And you're, you're running thousands and thousands of units. Lost my solver. Here it is. And you don't want to waste money, so you pull all wires tight and hook them so they'll stay in place for the solder. It's not necessary in every situation. In the oscillator circuit, it will be necessary in the higher bands to watch your wire length. Move this just like that. Okay. So then the ground goes right here. This is a little Q here. B is ground. So bring this here. There, trying to keep as much things as clear as possible away from uh, the switch to permit switch cleaning in the future. Okay, that's about right there. This one is a stranded wire, so I might just, I may get a, a better tenant. Well, <clears throat> it does pay to have a parts receiver. There was some revision, and this is a Mark 1D, and it's probably and I probably wired all the radios to this Mark 1D, but <clears throat> which works very very well. Essentially, they have bypassed uh, this little piece of band B, uh, this, this small uh, center tap on the L9. So for uh, L10 or the band 1, B goes to ground, A goes to C25, which is just that little trimmer, and the uh, center tap, which is also B, now they bypass um, no, they haven't bypassed it here. The center tap goes to L9A as well as pin 2 of switch of the switch. Then in the second band, this is what's uh, shorted actually between D and A. And there's no, this co part of the coil is not used. So B goes to the 1500 uh, Pico Ferro C24, A goes to D, and then <coughs> D goes to the band 3 at point D and A, uh, at point D and B, which is shorted together, and then to pin 3. So this goes to pin 3, which is 
what I thought it would be. Actually, I had a little cue in there to do that, and it's been lost in all the various things that are going on around here. It's good to have a parts receiver for this kind of thing. Undocumented changes. That's never happened before in Alicrafters, right? I think I want to make it shorter. You can actually do a, a wire tie at some point if I want to there. Nice. Silvery solder point. Okay, and then the last piece is the most important piece, is tying in C24. And we want to do that. Now it has, I'm going to go back and look at that parts receiver again and see how much length is there. There is a fair amount. So what I'll do is I'll take this down this way. Move this back. The whole point is to be able to get this thing out without taking everything out all the time. And these big, heavy, I'm telling you, these heavy leads are so much fun to manipulate. There we go. without wrapping around and making it so tight that it's seismically qualified, which is not necessary. This is a low seismic area, so we don't need <laughs> seismic design in our radius. If I were in New Madrid, Missouri, I might tie that thing around. But then again, I'd worry about other things besides this radio. Or maybe you do need a good radio, shortwave radio, to know what's going on. All right. Still want to keep that well away from there. All right. And we got it tied in. It should be relatively easy to remove. Relatively. <laughs> the lip of that case comes around like this, so it's not going to be a Totally a, a cakewalk to get that done. All right, I've been keeping wanting to put this band three in. First in the band one slot, then in the band two slot. Maybe we'll get it right this time. 
So we got this thing rotated around. This is band three. It's been reconditioned. And all these screws are really not in good shape. Not in the right position. So this comes around that way. And the C23 comes around to A, which is over there. So this has to kind of wrap itself around. They're all just twisted that way. And we'll come around on top to point A, which is installed this way. Pretty crowded in here on purpose. Must be an oscillator section, right? Okay. Let's get the screw in there. Our 10 ohm resistor is one of the connection points. It's kind of in the way right now. Let's just put this in here. sort of fish around until you find that place to screw it in. There we are. It only goes one way. That's the nifty thing. Another thing is this particular capacitor had the I want the um, full side at the switch and so that turned around the short end of the lead to, the, to towards let's move this out of the, way. Okay. the short end of the lead was turned towards uh, the, the switch and it was originally done the other way so all right now that is probably a short lead. Let me go check. Indeed it is. It's as short as we can get it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to just twist this around this way. And nothing more. And solder it right there. Without pinching it around and wrapping 87 times and making it size it. So it should be able to pull that out relatively easy. It will not be easy to do because you've got to get a soldering tool down right at the switch as well. All right. It's in solid. We'll just get rid of this excess. And it went flying. Probably not the smartest way to deal with that. Okay, so band 3 has 3300 installed to position 3 on the switch, which is down there, it's hard to see. Um, then it has a 10 ohm resistor at the center tap, which is C. D. connected to E, which I do not have a lead for. I'm going to have to put one in. Right. So, we've got a crossover lead from D and C. D and B. B and D are tied together. So we've got a crossover lead which we will bring over to I 
have to go look. <laughs> Yes, there's one more lead that goes from here to here. So, what will we do? Uh, use this. Because I can. And it's pretty cool stuff. Good. There we are. So we'll on this side. I hear someone coming. Solder this side. I'm going to have to add some more solder to that. That was a cold solder joint. It's not cold anymore. All right. Then the 10 ohm goes to A and on the next uh, switch, but also to pin four, which is right here. And we're going to put a little bit of a um, heat shrink on that if I can find a good suitable candidate. Still too much. There we go. We're not soldering yet. Okay. So, band three is in place, leaving band four, which is interesting. This is a 156 picofarads. It does not leak, so I left that in. I did check these others for um, DC leakage, and I had done. And this, they had. A tiny chief, which had turned completely into a resistor, uh, as the tie-in to the oscillator circuit. I had this 0.01 microfarad capacitor. Why not, I say? And the answer is, there, I am gonna. And so, uh, we're going to tie that in 
And let's get this uh, for to see if we can cut down on the drift of this receiver. Plus we have one lead that will come from the switch. That's right there. Which also connects to, okay, we'll, we'll get that in. Let's get this in here first. Let's not try and do this. Boy, we have to do it methodically, right? These are all, all these leads have to be made really short. They're just there as dressing to get it, get it done right. I still have slugs to put in. All right, uh, I'm back after some research. Actually, the last piece of the tape was lost uh, somehow to a camera malfunction, and that's a good thing because as I was finishing this uh, oscillator section, I realized when looking against the um, parts receiver, which is an operating parts receiver, there was a big problem with trying to just take the, the schematic and wire it up and then checking it. I uh, kept having revision after revision. So I decided to redraft or actually make corrections on this. This is the fourth, the fourth revision to this <laughs> schematic diagram and I think I got it that right now so we'll try this I've, there's a couple of tapes so this is like take four because I'd come to a point and then no that's not right and then I'd have to go back and do it again so anyway here it goes this is band one that's band one A the way these are A B C D A B C D a, B, C, D, like that. So the A is connected to C25, this is this little trimmer here, and also it's connected to here. The B is connected to ground, and the ground comes down to here. The C has no connection, no connection. The D uh, has, on L, this is called L10, is connected to A on band 2 and C on band 2 and pin 2 of the switch on this side. So here is, where was I? I was on D. Right. This is where I get mixed up. I'll, I'll be looking at this and I'll come back and look at this, this wrong coil. The correct coil I'm looking at is L10 right here. I need to have a big sign, neon sign, L10, L9. Okay, so D right here is connected to C on L9, which is also connected to A and to pin 2 and switch 2. And here it is right here, C right here. There, uh, whether that's a tap or not, I don't know, but because A and C are tied together, that's the way I drew it. Okay, that's for L9. And then C over here has no connection, so it's D right here. <laughs> are you confused? Yeah, yeah, right. You understand <laughs> what the problem is. So this is D, and it connects to C on L9. A on L9 and pin 2 of the switch. C, here's D, it's connected to C on L9, A on L9, and L2 on um, pin 2 of the switch. I think I said that exactly the same both ways. And you understand the problem. All right, for band 2, we have A, we've already talked about. B is connected, here's B. No, let's look at L9 now. This is L9, that's why I get confused. Okay, B is right here, A is right here, connects to C, 
A connect, B connects to the 1500 uh, picofarad C24 and then to the switch to this side of the switch and they're in order okay I can get into way too much detail if I we can get all twisted around all right then C again we've talked about is right here is connected to these others and then D comes up here to L8 connecting to B and D up here this is why we get confused as well as to uh, pin 3 on the switch so that's D of L9 A and B L9 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 Not, that was L8 okay A goes to the 1500 or oh, we were on that actually <laughs> we are on L8 <laughs> don't you love this getting ready uh, no we were finishing up L it's at L9 uh, so anyway A is here going to D C is here going to D B goes to the 1500 so D on this L9 is here and is connecting to A B it's not connecting to C See, here's Rev 5. Just delete this. This is why you get this way. I'm looking at this one and I'm looking at that one. So C is here. Of course it isn't connected to that. A, B, C is the 10. So this is wrong. They are now on Rev 5 of this. Okay. <laughs> A goes to the 3300 picofarad. B goes to C. No, B goes to D and then back to L9. B and A. Okay. This is also wrong. Okay. Rev 6. Okay. <laughs> if I only would point to the right coil when I'm pointing to the schematic, no problems. A goes to the, to the 3300 picofarad. B goes to D. B goes to D as well. Wrong one. Aha, uh -huh, that's what confuses me. D on here is connected to D on here. So this is L9 and it's L8. Rev 7. Okay. So D and D are connected together into B <laughs> on L8. Don't you love it? And then here's the 10. The 10 ohm resistor that goes to pin uh, to the pin 4 of the switch, which comes around also to actually goes into here, which is another 10 ohm resistor, which goes to another position on the mixer. <sighs> Finally, by the way, it tests out, all right? It's just trying to get this. The, the corrections made on this is the big deal. So, because we don't even know what how this D is connected in on this coil L9 right here. We don't know what I, I'd, I'd be have to take all this stuff out to look at that, and we're not going to worry about that. So there's a B there. So for the last one, it actually was a little more straightforward. A goes to the other side of the 10 ohm resistor right here. B goes to the switch, which is right here, goes down into the switch. C goes to pin 1 on this position, which is right here. 
as well as the 0.01 microfarad. Now, I think I talked about this before, but this is actually a 10,000 picofarad uh, mica capacitor that I had, which I'm going to use to hopefully control the um, uh, drift. So, and then D goes to ground as it is up here. Here's D and it's next to ground. Shoo! So, we can test. Let's get this in the. I'll get this out of the way. I've been messing up. This was trying to see what I was doing over here and then I was pointing under there. I'm sorry about that. Okay. So, A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. These D's are connected together in B. This D and that C and that A are connected together. It goes to the switch. Well, that's an easy way to put it. And that's actually the reconfiguration that was done. So, turn this on. I don't need this now. So we can measure, we can test it. So the output, so to speak, is over here at pin position four on the switch, which is connected here. So we can just connect here. And the input for testing this is down here, which is, comes off the switch and goes directly to these main tuning capacitors. So, That's band one. Let's see what we can get. We're going to do this in the area of capacitors. There's a very small, there's like a hundred picofarads of capacitance in band one for various reasons between here and there. That's what this is measuring. It's, but it's basically showing you we have kind of we have continuity through the circuit through this trimmer then into here and then to that switch then we'll go to band two and what do you know here's the 1500 picofarad there we go that's easier to do it this way there we go. 15 flopping around, 1500 picofarads from here to here. Band 2. Should be around, yep, 3300, 33, you know, 90, we don't have out of range. 3300 picofarads between the switch here to then to pin four and then band four is kind of con this is a totally this is a like a transformer arrangement so I look at it on the inductance there we go 4.3 microhenries of inductance between position 4 and through the switch around to the main tuning capacitor. Um, and then of course we can do this while we're at it. And measure 0.01 microfarads. So, it base this switching is such an important part of communications receivers 
the design here is built in to keep it as the line the length of leads as close as possible between so you got band three coil very close to the switch band four very close to the switch but bands one and two where it's not so important they're farther out they're farther out and then on the other side at the business side I guess at the output of the os of this oscillator coil section it goes to the mixer and it's switching is an innovation that occurred in the 20s to avoid um, the oldest sets in the 20s had coils that you, you know, a box of coils and you plug them in and you switch them out when you go from band to band and that's pretty inconvenient. You want a, a radio unit that uh, does everything all in one piece. Um, and the, uh, that's that's why there's so much complexity in here. Uh, you've got to, all these design considerations for lead length and the higher frequencies, uh, proper capacitance to track up and down the band, and then to arrange in a way. You've, yeah, I can get to I'm all, from this direction. I can make all adjustments. We're going to have to put. Uh, with the last thing I said, uh, uh, we're going to have to put the slugs back in here, which I need to do. And then that will complete the oscillator section. And this is as close to perfection I can get, but I'm sure others can achieve more. But no matter what our efforts in perfection are, we have... Uh, the limitation of that we always fall short of the mark and uh, just remember this a couple things uh, as we sign off here one there is no sin you've ever done that can't be for, forgiven uh, forgiveness is available to all uh, who ask for it in the proper way and secondly uh, we were not given a spirit of fear and I will not be fearful, uh, but uh, and in these times, there's a lot of fear out there without, and uh, just understand that we get, we can either have a, a spirit of faith or a spirit of fear, and mine is a spirit of faith, which is the opposite of fear. And with that, I will sign off from. Uh, this conclusion of uh, revision seven of our uh, uh, rebuild of the SX99. The next one will be the rebuild of the RF section, and that too will be fairly complex. We might be able to get the antenna in at the same time in a reasonable time frame because it's much less complex than either of this or this. So with that, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for new subscribers, and uh, God bless you. One final note here, just for posterity. Here is the final markup of L7, of revision 7, L7, revision 7 of the schematic markup. L10, A, B, C, no connection, D, connected to L9 in the switch. L9, A, B, C, and D, connected to D of L8 and L8B, as well as the switch. L8, A, B, C at the resistor, and D. Then there's no changes in L7. With that, uh, thanks for watching.